All right, now we're going to talk about Anne Fausto Sterling's article called Should There Be Only Two Sexes? So what's going on in this piece? She's following up on her previous article, which argues that it's somewhat absurd to stick with only two sexes so strictly. She says that the sex dyad is artificial and seems to be clearly inaccurate. So in this paper, she's arguing that sex assignment as it is now for infants with ambiguous genitalia is wrong. There are three main parts of her argument here. No surgeries unless they're to save the child's life. Any sex assignment should be based off of probability of the child's gender identity, not aesthetics. And the family and child should be provided long-term counseling and transparency. Now, you'll notice here in this paper she uses a lot of narratives, a lot more than what most philosophers do. But she does this given that the evidence of the harms is key to her argument. So why is sex assignment surgery wrong? A, it's mostly for cosmetic reasons. The sexual pleasure and gender identity of the person is less prioritized than cosmetic considerations. Also, evidence shows that many people suffer more from sex assignment surgeries, and this is because of a lack of a feeling in the genitals from scarring. I mean, imagine never being able to have an orgasm. Also, there's pain and complications in the genitals from surgeries. The ability to have sexual pleasure, as she says, is a human birthright. Also, there's emotional damage, lack of trust of doctors, disturbing penetration of the child necessary to retain sexual function of the genitals, and emotional and physical trauma from having multiple surgeries. Now, this all sounds pretty bad, based on the evidence. Now, we're going to look at what Fausto Sterling is doing here with how sex relates to gender. So what does it mean when assigned children have tendencies to cross-dress, for instance, or that assigned children go up to be trans? Does this mean that there is some innate connection between gender and sex? Now this is hotly debated, but we can tell for sure that sex and gender are closely related and may not be so clearly delineated. So according to Charlotte Witt, who is another philosopher, she's going to say that sex isn't wholly biological and gender isn't wholly social. So sex is assigned, as we can see here, based on social norms as either male or female, although there's clear evidence that biologically there are many more variations in the anatomy and chromosomes and hormones. Furthermore, gender is an embodied identity, and we deem a person a woman or feminine if she appears to have reproductive functions of a female. So what do we do with all this information about assigned children? We don't want to say that there's some natural inclination based on the quote-unquote true sex of the person because that marginalizes the experiences of trans people who were born with unambiguous sex. Also, this further is implying that there are only two sexes by saying that there's one true sex that corresponds to one of the two genders. But we could say something like this. The sexual and gender ambiguity demonstrates that because gender and sex are somewhat overlapping, the assignment to male or female, and thus man or woman, as the, as the doctors often aim, is clearly too simplistic and forces the child into an ill-fitting box. So Fausto Sterling brings up this point, I mean, wouldn't life as an intersex or hermaphroditic person be more miserable? Evidence shows that those who haven't been intervened on are actually much more concerned with their sexual health and well-being than any cosmetic desire. So she does admit that some are somewhat embarrassed, but I mean really, who isn't embarrassed about some aspect of our bodies? And some were relatively comfortable. Some wanted sex changes as children, but these were much more successful overall after the child passed that 18-month period. So why should we throw out the status quo of the two sexes? Fausto Sterling claims that the wide range of acceptable gendered behaviors seems to imply that we will be able to accept many sexes in the future. And trans theory has shown that it is sometimes not the desire for a trans person to wholly adopt each trait of the sex they've transitioned to. So a trans woman may choose not to be completely feminine in a typical manner. So based on the variations in gender performances by trans people and also by cis people, I mean, you see cis people all the time not fully enacting their quote-unquote assigned gender traits, right? This is going to show that 
while some do enjoy being very feminine or very masculine, it isn't necessary for a person to be either male or female. Also, there's no real harm in making the spectrum broader. So what do we do now? Fausto Sterling says, stop worrying so much about what is under everyone's clothes. Think of cultural genitals rather than physical genitals as a marker of the person's sex. Furthermore, although trans people are not necessarily related in any way to the experiences of intersex people or children with ambiguous genitalia, we should continue to work with the trans liberation movements because this is opening up an important discussion about embracing gender fluidity and a wide range of genders and sexes. So we can see that even if intersex people deal with very different problems from people in the LGBT community, we can see that the social problems can still be similar. So this is why we can look at the social justice needs of trans people, gays and lesbians, and intersex people as relating closely. So sex, gender, and sexuality are socially implicated very similarly. We can see this with Fausto Sterling's examples of marriage. So that's it for Fausto Sterling. Now you're going to go ahead and move on to the next reading. And once again, go ahead and post anything on the discussion forum if you're confused about any aspect of Fausto Sterling. And I'm sure some of us will come to your rescue.